Um, hey, Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it was a great presentation. And um, I have shared my screen. Uh, let me know if you guys can see my screen. Looks great, Arvind. All right. Thank you. All right. So uh, I'm going to talk about, as Mark said, like, you know, I'm going to talk about uh, installing and uh, using uh, Mobile Center. Uh, so, um, uh, and uh, we're going to start with, uh, you know, what is Mobile Center? I introduce uh, Mobile Center and then uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the architecture, uh, the installation uh, best practices, and then uh, uh, you know, show a demo on using Mobile Center and how it uh, integrates with uh, you know other uh, Microsoft tools, um, you know other automation tools. Uh, maybe like you know, we'll focus on uh, one tool, and then uh, uh, but other tools pretty much work uh, a similar way. Um, so we. Uh, at TIA uh, started using, uh, you know, looking into mobile uh, testing and mobile automation like um, five, almost five years back. Uh, uh, we used to, uh, uh, you know, use a tool called uh, Mobile Labs and uh, we uh, switched over to Mobile Center uh, uh, almost a year back. We started looking at Mobile Center two years back uh, and then uh, we did a POC on it, and then uh, we switched to uh, Mobile Center, uh, you know, uh, mid last year. And then we have been uh, using Mobile Center in our environment uh, for almost like uh, six to seven months. Uh, but the Mobile Center uh, has been in the market for almost uh, three years now. Uh, and uh, when we started doing our POC, we were basically comparing, uh, uh, mainly interested in Mobile Center, uh, because of its integration with other um, microfocus tools, uh, you know, as uh, we ha already had, uh, um, you know, ALM and uh, uh, you know, UFT for functional testing, uh, performance center for performance and load testing uh, in house, and uh, you know, so based on that, uh, we wanted uh, to look at uh, mobile center. Uh, but initially, when we started looking at mobile center, uh, we uh, had uh, some, uh, you know, uh, uh, performance issues that uh, we wanted uh, Microfocus to fix. And, uh, uh, you know, after uh, they did that, we switched to Mobile Center. All right. So uh, Mobile Center, obviously, as uh, the name um, uh, indicates, it's a mobile uh, testing uh, platform, uh, you know, uh, and it, it integrates uh, seamlessly with uh, uh, you know the tools, other tools like um, you know UFT for functional testing and uh, uh, for test automation tools, uh, UFT and LeanFT, and uh, for performance testing tools like uh, Performance Center, uh, and it also integrates well with uh, uh, Appium uh, for uh, test automation. Uh, so it uh, supports uh, uh, real devices and emulators. Uh, you know that is uh, one of uh, Real good benefits of using uh, Mobile Center, right? Uh, so we can have an on-prem uh, 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 lab uh, setup where uh, we have a collection of uh, uh, Android and uh, iOS devices, and we, it also uh, works with uh, the cloud, uh, where we can have uh, uh, where we can connect to Amazon uh, device farm, and uh, uh, you know you can. Uh, um, get devices from the cloud and then uh, execute your test there too. And uh, it also integrates uh, uh, via plugin uh, to Genkit. Uh, if you want to, uh, uh, you, if you have a, a defined uh, DevOps uh, environment and a pipeline, uh, and then you can do an automated uh, uh, build and deploy. And uh, if you have a well defined uh, automated uh, test suite, uh, you can actually kick it off uh, from Jenkins uh, using a plugin. Um, so mobile center architecture. Uh, so it's a client server architecture, and uh, uh, it uh, it has a server and a connector piece. Uh, the server is uh, basically like you know uh, it uh, provides uh, the UI for you to manage uh, your devices, mobile applications, and uh, you know, it also lets the administrators to uh, 
manage, um, you know, create devices groups and uh, user groups um, uh, and manage the settings. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it can be a Windows or Linux server. And um, uh, for a connector, it uh, uh, connects, I mean, as the name indicates, right? Like, you know, it, uh, uh, it connects to the mobile devices. And um, uh, it, uh, it can be, uh, I mean, like the server comes with its own connector. Uh, you can actually hook up your devices to the server directly. Um, it, uh, I mean, uh, and uh, uh, you can connect the uh, devices to it and then uh, uh, access the devices remotely. But if you have an, uh, want to build an enterprise solution, you might want to have a different uh, connector uh, environment, right? Um, and uh, basically it supports uh, Windows, Linux, and uh, Mac OS. Uh, for our environment, uh, we have a Windows uh, connector. Uh, 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 it sits on a uh, Windows uh, uh, 2012 uh, uh, virtual uh, environment, and uh, we have two Mac OS connectors. Uh, one uh, we have for iOS uh, devices. Uh, uh, we have about uh, 20 devices connected to uh, uh, the Mac. Uh, machine and um, uh, we have about uh, uh, 18, 19 uh, Android devices connected to another um, Mac Mini. Uh, so we bought this um, uh, the cabinet uh, to house our uh, devices. So it's basically a 48 device uh, cabinet and uh, it has three USB hubs in it. Um, it's from Triplight and um, it also uh, houses uh, the connector uh, uh, that's on the Mac uh, Mini that uh, we have in house. Uh, that uh, it also houses that, um, and uh, the three USB hubs are connected to uh, the Mac Mini, uh, and all uh, and each uh, USB hub uh, is connected to 16 uh, uh, devices. Um, I mean, it it works for us uh, if you are uh, looking to build. Um, uh, a uh, um, mobile solution and it's a, it's a good place to start. All right, uh, so the installation, right? Like, you know, uh, I, you know, we, um, you know, used, uh, we started with a, a dedicated server and we wanted to keep our server, uh, uh, as a, a, you know, separate from the connector. Uh, so uh, I would I would advise you to do that uh, that way like you know you don't really put a lot of load on one machine uh, so uh, essentially uh, have a dedicated uh, server and the connector environment and uh, if uh, you have um, the budget available uh, I would advise you to uh, uh, you know have separate uh, environment for iOS and Android devices that way like you know if uh, you'd be able to uh, in in case of issues, right, you'll be able to uh, troubleshoot, uh, you know, the issues um, uh, appropriately. And uh, if you have a Mac OS connector, so the connector supports uh, Windows, Linux, and uh, Mac OS. Uh, if you have a Mac OS connector, uh, advise you to limit the number of devices to 16. I mean, we have a 20 uh, devices in our environment, but if we go more than 16, um, you know, we have seen uh, issues come up, uh, and uh, uh, I would recommend you to uh, limit the number of devices to 16. Uh, and we are working with HP. I mean, the, the Mac OS uh, uh, supports um, uh, the connector software supports 50 devices. Uh, there is uh, an official support for it, but we have seen issues when we do uh, connect more than 16. So we are working with Microfocus to, uh, you know, uh, uh, fix those issues. Uh, but uh, at this time, I would recommend to stick to 16. Um, uh, use a genuine uh, USB cable uh, to connect uh, to the devices, uh, especially with um, Android, uh, I have, uh, we have encountered uh, issues uh, when we uh, use third party USB cables. Uh, uh, you know, again, like, you know, the recommendation from Microfocus is that uh, you, you should be using the cable that came with the device. Uh, if not, um, you know, uh, use a genuine USB cable. Um, 
With the iOS devices, uh, you know, you need to enable uh, UI automation uh, for it to work. And uh, with Android devices, uh, you need to uh, enable uh, developer options and USB debugging uh, for, you know, the connector to be able to uh, recognize your device and install the agents on it. Uh, that is uh, for any any uh, mobile testing solution. Uh, you know, you have to do that. Uh, you know, uh, a quick. Uh, I mean, if, if, you, if you're not sure uh, how to do that, a quick. Uh, you know, Google uh, should be able to help you with that. Um, uh, and we advise you to. Uh, uh, you know, uh, for Android uh, or the devices to stay awake. Uh, that way, it doesn't. Uh, you know, lock itself or. Uh, 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 that would that would mean even for iOS devices uh, to disable the uh, auto lock uh, so that you can connect to the devices and uh, keep the brightness uh, to the minimum uh, because you are not uh, look, going to look at uh, the device uh, essentially you are going to uh, uh, you know VNC into the device or do a remote into the device uh, so uh, you don't want to uh, eat a uh, uh, you know battery yet. Uh, uh, you know, and power uh, reduce the power consumption and uh, uh, heat generation. Um, another thing is uh, place the devices in vertical position, like you know, uh, for the orientation change to work properly. Uh, this is uh, again something that uh, we um, you know encountered uh, uh, issues uh, when changing orientation. So finally, like you know, uh, having the devices in a vertical position uh, helped uh, uh, with uh, the changing the orientation. And um, um, when installing when the, uh, installing the connector and connecting the iOS devices, the agents need to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, signed uh, with a development certificate. Uh, this is. Uh, for you to be able to install the agents on the device uh, for the initial use. Uh, again, like you know, this is a must with uh, you know any um, testing solution out there. Uh, so it's it's not uh, really something with uh, mobile center. Like you know, any any solution that you go to mobile labs or uh, Perfecto Mobile, you need to be um, signing your uh, agents that go on the devices. Um, Another tip is to use a uh, app packaging and signing service. Uh, this is uh, for the application under test. Uh, so for the, uh, you know, that way, you know, it's automatically installed on uh, to the, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it uh, during my demo, uh, but uh, uh, this is, uh, again, this is not required, but recommended, like, um, and uh, I would recommend, uh, uh, to set up automatic uh, app uploads uh, to mobile center. That way, like, you know, uh, your applications are not, uh, you know, you don't have to drag and drop or uh, upload uh, your build uh, every time your build is ready. So you can actually use uh, the APIs from mobile center uh, to be, uh, to automatically upload applications uh, to it. All right, okay, let's uh, go to the fun part of the demo. Right. So uh, how we have set up is uh, we have uh, integrated our uh, uh, in a mobile center to um, uh, I, I mean LDAP um, uh, uh, AD uh, authentication. Uh, so if uh, the users can use their uh, email addresses or uh, uh, the AD IDs uh, in network uh, username and password uh, to be able to. Uh, log into mobile center, but for this demo, I'm going to use um, my local uh, admin account so that I can showcase um, the admin features. Uh, so log in, and uh, so as soon as you can log in, like you know, you can see the uh, the UI layout, right? Like you know, uh, so there are three tabs: uh, the application, devices, admin, administration tab. A normal user would only see two tabs, apps and devices tab. And um, the uh, left side of uh, the pane, uh, you can see the filter. Uh, this is for both uh, the apps and uh, devices. 
uh, where you can filter, uh, you know, based on your criteria, and uh, uh, you can see, uh, you know, what you're really looking for. Um, and uh, you, you can, you know, I mean, uh, since we are using a local account, I can change my password here. Uh, but if you're using your LDAP uh, AD account, um, I mean, changing password doesn't work uh, because it's essentially a network. Uh, uh, but if you're using a local account, uh, you can change uh, password a lot of here. Um, another thing is, if you are logged in as an administrator, uh, you can collect uh, the logs. Uh, for example, if you encounter um, uh, a bug and if you want to send uh, the logs to uh, MicroFocus or, uh, you know, uh, you want to send uh, the logs uh, um, uh, to somebody else for review, right? Like, you know, uh, you can collect, the, you don't you, you don't have to log in to uh, different servers, the, uh, the connector server or uh, the actual uh, MicroFocus, uh, I'm sorry, my, uh, mobile center server to collect the logs. Uh, one place you can collect all the logs um, uh, when you go, um, you know, uh, go to here to collect the logs. So for apps, um, so let's uh, focus on one of our applications here. Uh, so these ads, uh, as I have said, are automatically uploaded uh, uh, to Mobile Center. Uh, so that's how our build process is. Uh, once the build uh, is complete, uh, you know, uh, we run a script in Jenkins uh, that would automatically upload uh, our application uh, into Mobile Center. Uh, and the mobile center, once it receives uh, the application, the IPA or APK, um, for an iOS device, iOS uh, application, uh, it would re-sign and uh, repackage uh, the application. Uh, uh, so when I say re-sign, right, like, you know, it would re-sign uh, the application for um, our, our devices uh, 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 so that, uh, when we install uh, the application uh, onto our test devices, uh, we don't have to go in and trust uh, our uh, uh, enterprise certificate. So uh, to avoid that, uh, we resign re our applications uh, using uh, uh, a developer certificate and uh, our uh, provisioning profile. And, and uh, so you can, uh, see what build or version or upload time, those information uh, you can see here. And uh, there are, uh, you can, if you want to delete an application entirely, like, you know, all the builds uh, inside the application. So right now we have uh, quite a few builds. And um, uh, if you want to delete everything together, uh, you know, you need to uh, delete all the application uploads here. Uh, but uh, if you want to delete an individual build, uh, you need to go into uh, more information uh, and then mm, select a particular build and then delete it. Uh, uh, you can also manually upload your application uh, by dragging and dropping your IPAs here. Or uh, you know, if you click on uh, upload application, it would uh, open up um, you know the dialog box to. Uh, find out your, uh, you know, IPAs or AP, APKs, APK files to upload here. Uh, so uh, one other thing that uh, the UI helps me is to understand the minimum requirement of an application. Uh, so for us, uh, you know, uh, let's say like, you know, for our TIA application, like, you know, I can see uh, it supports, um, you know, iOS um, 10.3 plus. Uh, it doesn't sub, uh, it doesn't support anything less than 10.3. Uh, similarly for Android, uh, it supports uh, you know Android 4.4 plus. Uh, so those are uh, we can get all those information from the UI. Uh, and uh, we go to the devices, right? So I've, you know one thing that uh, I would like uh, for uh, mobile. Uh, uh, micro focus to see uh, to us like you know uh, we really would like to see a tabular form uh, so that uh, you know we can clearly see uh, a, a lot lot more information and lot more devices rather than uh, uh, scrolling and uh, uh, trying to find the device 
but uh, you know, I really like the uh, filter uh, here that uh, helps me to filter out uh, the devices that I really want to use. Since our application supports uh, 10.3 plus, um, uh, you know, I can filter out uh, the available uh, devices and then uh, uh, you know, connect to a device uh, that I want to connect to. Uh, for our demo, I have uh, reserved a couple of devices so that uh, none of the other users uh, in our environment, uh, uh, you know, take it up. Um, so you can, uh, you can from the uh, displayed information, you can see, you know, the two devices are used by me. Um, if it is used by others or reserved by others, um, you can um, uh, check it out here. Like, you know, it, it's uh, used, reserved by one of our users uh, in the environment. And um, other information uh, that uh, helps us uh, uh, is like, you know, you can uh, see uh, the actual uh, device. Uh, so how we have named our devices, uh, you, you know, we have given a, a proper name uh, to identify uh, the uh, actual device model and uh, uh, we also given the location of uh, the device. Uh, you know, uh, if we find any issues, if you want to go to the physical device, and then if you want to uh, uh, troubleshoot with the device, uh, we can actually uh, easily find it uh, by uh, this location information. Um, and uh, uh, you can actually remotely restart a device from the UI uh, using, um, you know, restart device. Uh, it triggers a command um, on the connector server, and then it restarts, uh, issues a uh, I device uh, command, and then uh, it restarts this uh, device. And uh, we can also, if uh, for some reason, uh, the devices uh, go, you know, offline, right? We can try and, reconnect the device, uh, which would uh, trigger um, the agent installation process on the device. And um, uh, I mean, that's uh, the use of a reconnect device uh, button here. Um, all right, let's uh, connect to a device. And uh, this is an iPad uh, 10.5. Uh, you know, this is an actual physical device. Like, you know, if you see, uh, open up the camera, uh, you can uh, see it's an actual physical device sitting uh, uh, inside our cabinet. I mean, you can actually see another device, um, you know, that's uh, sitting close to it. Uh, so, um, you know, from here on, like, you know, you can actually, uh, in, uh, you know, install uh, the app that you want to install, uh, you know, our application. Uh, you can choose the application that you want to install and then um, uh, install it and then use it. Uh, I'm not going to go through the process of actually installing and uh, using, uh, mainly because it takes uh, you know five to six minutes for it to push it to the connector uh, and then install it. Um, and uh, I would recommend uh, selecting uh, uninstall the application after current session because that way it leaves the device at an initial state uh, for the next uh, user. Um, uh, I mean, I'm on a, I'm on a corporate network here uh, on, uh, uh, um, you know, on Perm, uh, but if I want to look, work on a VPN, uh, you know, it, it is a bit, uh, if I'm looking at, working on a bit slow connection, uh, you know, I usually reduce uh, the image quality to like 75% uh, and then uh, zoom it uh, so that uh, the image uh, or the, uh, screen share loads a bit faster for me, and I'm able to interact uh, with uh, the device um, much faster. Um, I mean, you can, I can change uh, the orientation. Uh, right, oh, right now, uh, it, the orientation is locked uh, for our testing, uh, but um, uh, if the orientation is unlocked, uh, we can change the orientation. Uh, you can change the orientation or take a screenshot uh, and uh, uh, do all many things here. And one other uh, thing that I really like is if I want to send a long uh, URL, uh, yeah, I can actually like you know paste. Um, I don't have to go type 
use uh, the uh, keyboard uh, here uh, uh, to type it on the device. I can actually send a text uh, to the device uh, where um, I can, uh, if it is a long URL, uh, you know, it, it helps uh, to do your testing much faster. Um, all right, and uh, when you close a session, right, like, you know, uh, it's, it's, you should click on the close button to close your session. Uh, I mean, that way, it, uh, the connector communicates to the server to release your uh, release the session, and then uh, your device is available for others to use. Um, you know, it, the, the easiest way is to click uh, close tab to close it, uh, but um, that, that is not the recommended way. Uh, you know, you need to click on the close button uh, to actually, you know, release your session. So. Uh, when you connect, like, you know, there is a lock on the device. Uh, if you see here, uh, there is a lock on the device and that, so that nobody can connect to it. Uh, so you need to release the lock. Uh, you need to click on the close button to release the lock uh, for it to be uh, released. Um, so the administration, uh, in terms of time, let me do it. I do a quick uh, thing here. Uh, you can actually group the devices. Um, uh, you know, based on uh, if you want to uh, segregate uh, the devices for uh, a testing, you can uh, create a separate group and then uh, uh, allocate uh, users to it uh, so that no, um, in the shared, it's not available in the shared pool. Uh, and uh, you can actually connect uh, to Amazon device farm uh, uh, from uh, from updating here the settings. And uh, um, you can actually, uh, and you can also, in do the LDAP integration uh, here in settings too. Uh, yeah, LDAP integration. Um, actually, I did want to talk about uh, the connectors uh, uh, too. Like, you know, we have two connectors here. You can uh, see a quick overview of, you know, what versions you are running and then, uh, you know, how many devices are connected and, and uh, how many devices are being used, uh, those kind of information here too. Um, Actually, I, I wanted to do a more uh, in depth to like, you know, with respect to connecting the devices, uh, connecting to the devices from uh, Performance Center. Uh, uh, but uh, in the, since we are out of time, uh, I mean, we can easily uh, connect to it. Uh, the integration is very smooth uh, with respect to uh, all the micro focus tools. Uh, this is a, a true client. Um, uh, native uh, mobile uh, recording uh, with uh, Vuegen. Uh, so you, you need to just fill in uh, the details and uh, once you hit connect, you can actually connect to a physical device and do your recording uh, for the scripts. Um, so going back. So my contact information is here. If you have any questions regarding uh, uh, mobile center or uh, uh, you know, or any mobile testing, like, you know, uh, I've been using uh, the different tools for uh, quite some time, for the past uh, four or five years now. Uh, you know, feel free to uh, hit me. Uh, you know, I should be able to help you guys out. Uh, 